So, um, where would you guys like to start? Because there's so many uh, interesting aspects to uh, Daniel and Revelation. And um, we could start with um, where you guys feel we are on the timeline as far as has any seals opened? Has, you know, anything happened or has it happened? Or uh, we'd love to hear your guys' take and well, anything like that. Joe. I, I, I think we're somewhere uh, uh, between the third and fourth. We might be seeing yeah. some of the fourth starting up right about now. And yeah, I've yeah. got some really good in-depth uh, uh, explanations for the uh, the four uh, first four seals, the four horsemen, that uh, maybe uh, most people haven't heard yet. And so okay. I'd kind of like to get into those if that's all right with y'all. Awesome. I'm sure Watchful would love to hear that. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm listening to you guys. Uh, I'm getting more coffee, so I'm listening. Go ahead. Sure. Um, I start with Revelation six two, uh, the white horse. Uh, in the Strong's Concordance, the word bow is uh, comes from fifty one fifteen, and it's taxon, which is bow. Uh, apparent uh, apparently as the simplest fabric, bow, fianco or arcus in Latin would be an archer's type bow, uh, a fianco o plow, or a bow weapon, uh, is uh, what it would be in uh, in the Greek. But uh, um, some theologians try to say that toxon uh, was related to toxic, which means poison dipped arrows. However, even the English says absolutely nothing about arrows. That's right. Uh, so that's not even included. Uh, so Strong suggests the simplest fabric until someone decided to correct his decades-long research and change the print in the newer books, uh, the newer uh, Strong Exhaustive Concordance, to say Not exhaustive, a bow. Just concordance. Remember, they yeah. changed it. We were just looking yeah. it up. And uh, it just says a bow, which implies a weapon. But uh, in the original uh, one, I don't know, Ryan has a picture of uh, my Strong's Concordance and where I had highlighted uh, 5115, which I'll read it real quickly. It says, uh, 5115, Toxon, uh, from the base of 5088, a bow, apparently as the simplest fabric bow. Now, when you think of the simplest fabric, a bow, take a little piece of fabric. Now, what if that fabric is right here and has a couple loops around the ears? So that yeah. white horse quite possibly could have been referring to that particular bow. And it also mm. says, and to him was given a corona, which is a crown. Uh, as you know, uh, there was a... Uh, a certain ailment, uh, shall we say, that uh, uh, refers something to a corona. Sure. Um, well, where he gets the corona from is the Latin Vulgate. Yeah. Um, it's two different crown diadem, and looking back at the Latin Vulgate, that word that they actually used for that was corona. Uh, I believe that Satan always chips away at the edges of uh, language. He may not oh, yeah. be allowed to change the Bible, but he yep. can sure change our understanding of what a word is. Well, yeah, and Christopher and I kind of have these uh, conversations back and forth sometimes uh, mm -hmm. on, and I've made this point before on uh, hermeneutics and the biblical keys to interpretation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most people, they those sound really good. Um, and, and it sounds like the heart behind them is legit. Like hermeneutics, the whole point is so that we have rules by which we can agree. That's right. the point of hermeneutics. Same things with the biblical research, the principles of research and um, interpretation. You know, like there's rules like all scripture interprets itself in the verse and the context and where it's used before. Things like that. Amen. We wanted to bring that up too. <laughs> Glad yeah, so, that you did. But so, but um, those we have to remember that those are man-made rules. We we uh, we use those because we come to an agreement together to use them. Um, so mm -hmm. their authority is actually limited. 
because uh, the scripture says, I think it's in First Peter one twenty one or Second Peter one. 2021, it says, uh, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. Private yeah. interpretation is one's own interpretation. So when we make up rules by which to interpret the scripture, we're making up our own interpretation. Um, and Bring those can your be own understanding. Correct. Exactly. And those can be dangerous. And, and this is what and the reason I bring this up is because what we're handling right now is a really good example where the hermeneutics and the rules of interpretation can actually bite you in the butt because hmm. the diadem is used because it's a crown. People can take that literally to mean that it is a crown, whereas the word Corona could very well be associated with a coronavirus. A word had to be used in the text in order to get our to get our attention and to get us to think about these things. And if we're if we're so limited by our own rules of interpretation, it can literally stop you from understanding God's intention. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, move, somebody's to... somebody's hitting a microphone. It's making a bunch of noise. Yeah. Is that you? No, not me. Uh, I think it was you, Jeff, because your your um your your audio yeah. dropped out really low. Okay, I, I put my move my papers over in front of the, oh. my computer, oh, okay. and I have no idea where the speaker is on this thing, so I probably covered it up. No, uh, and, and I apologize. Um, I'm trying to juggle uh, the four kids while I'm doing this. I'm, That's I'm, right. I, I'm on my own tonight, so please excuse me. I'm listening work. to everything that you're saying. I'm enjoying. Show, I, I enjoy seeing you uh, juggling the kids, as you call it. Uh, I've seen you do it many a night, <laughs> and it's yeah. good because you should involve your family, you know, and yeah. uh, not take away too much time from them. So I think that's great. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I, well, they they like to learn this stuff too. So they'll they'll sit on the floor and watch the show, and um, mm -hmm. they enjoy it. They um, it's awesome. just sometimes it's. Uh, um, a tad overwhelming trying to uh, sort out them pulling the cat by the head and the tail and the feet all at the same time and um, but it, it is what it is it's a, yeah. it's part of the fun okay uh, if, if it's okay with y'all I'd like to move into the red horse uh, and sure. I'll cover that one really quickly there's not a whole lot that I have about that one but the red can horse I, can and I, the no, revelation before you move into that, can I say something? I've never yeah, heard absolutely. that explanation with the cloth before. That's new. I appreciate oh, you sharing that. Yeah. That's, that's really good, cool. Good. Well, that's what we're here for is, you know, uh, to throw around some ideas and we can look at it and say, hmm, you know, yeah. and make our own decisions about it, of course. I don't think that I, I never demand that everybody mm. has to believe it the same sure. way that I tell it. Uh, right. Because it's going to mean something else to each person. Well, and, you know, Mark, our guest last night, Pastor Mark Biltz, made a really good point, and he makes it every time he's on, is that there could be 70 different meanings behind something. So yeah. it's like, it, like mm -hmm. you know, it could mean bow so that it got our attention to look at a certain constellation that has a rider on a horse with a bow. And it can also mean bow, meaning, you know, the root word of that word actually means cloth. Mm -hmm. So that's what we, that's run neat. Into. we talk about the uh, Hebrew language and the Greek learning that how many different ways can you translate the word in Hebrew to Greek, then from Greek to Latin, then Latin to English. Right. How many different ways before you lose track of what it was originally supposed to be? Well, yeah. from my understanding, yeah, the New Testament was written in Greek and Hebrew was the Old Testament to find that native original meaning. That, that's my understanding. Mostly. That's but in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> But that, that, um, yeah, I could be totally wrong, but that's just uh, the way I have uh, understand things from the scholars that have taught me. But again, yeah. uh, I'm always open to being wrong. It's just passing along what I was told. Yeah, I do my best. And uh, the languages that I rely on the most is, of course, Old Testament Hebrew and some Chaldean. Uh, but then uh, for the uh, New Testament, I always go to the Greek, and every now and then I'll slip in something from the Latin because uh, it'll uh, give us some ideas, uh, uh, further open up the meaning of some of the words. But we'll see that as we go through some of the stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've moved on to Revelation 6, uh, 
uh, verse 3, the red horse, uh, uh, take peace from the earth that they slaughter one another. No mention of war. Right. One another is definitely person to person. And that comes from Strong's uh, number 240 in the uh, Greek, Elion, uh or Elion. Uh, El Elion. Pardon my pronunciation. Yeah, uh, which is one person and another single person. So it's uh, and to him was given a great sword. But we've got to remember that uh, uh, the word "great" does not necessarily always have to mean great in strength Large. or in size. And in this case, I, I'm thinking that it's the plural. Uh, form, uh, Megas, uh, and great in Strong's 3173, Megas uh, includes the prolific forms, both the female and the plural, uh, plural, uh, which is grandis. Uh, great, if in plural form, is great in number. Um, let's see. Hmm. So he's given a great sword. It's great in number, but the word for sword that they used was Makaira. Now, a Makaira is like a dirk. Uh, that's a, an Irish or Scottish knife that is uh, basically a small knife, and it's made for puncturing. Uh, they were often called kidney knives for close combat. Mm. Uh, so wow. it was a puncturing device. Now, uh, if you think back to the time of... Uh, John, when he was writing it, what word do you think he might use for a syringe? A dirk. There was no word hmm. for it. So he yeah, would so call it something a small and device. pointy. Yeah, small yeah. and pointy. Uh-huh. So, uh, so Makaira, a knife, a dirk, a small stabbing knife, uh, or Merriam-Webster, uh, a long straight dagger, not a curved. Uh, it's of Scottish origin, and it's used in close hand-to-hand -hand combat or person-to-person. -person. Now, I happen to think that since it talks about uh, the Makaira, the smaller uh, uh, blade or puncturing device, I think that that might be a closer understanding than what it seems to say by calling it a great sword. Right. It's great in number and... Uh, believe me, uh, believe you me, there were a lot of them used of those syringes. Yes, there was. Uh, so I think that could have been our second, uh, second horse. Uh, Agreed. Uh, and uh, then uh, it moves on from there. Well, oh, I have here also. So a big broadsword is out of the picture. Uh and the Greek, uh, the Greek, if they wanted to portray uh, the uh, the really big broadsword, they would have called it uh, a padiaspathia or a ramphaya, uh, not a makaira. The makaira is a very small knife. And as a matter of fact, uh, Peter, uh, the same word was used in the Greek uh, makaira for when Peter took that sword. And he lopped off the uh, the ear of uh, the uh, priest servant. Priest, yeah. yeah, yeah. So when he did that, uh, I mean, if he'd have used a a great sword or a big, huge sword, broadsword or uh, the two uh, uh, two edged sword, he probably would have ended up lopping off the guy's arm or, or his head uh, instead of just an ear. Peter was a fisherman. He right. used. And, and many of the fishermen used what was called a makaira. Uh, it was a fishing knife, and it was used for puncturing and cutting open and gutting a fish and stuff like that, uh, or for a net. So it was small. It was not a big, huge thing. And actually, I've seen some paintings where they've gotten that right. Uh, there are some old, very old paintings where they have a picture of Peter actually holding what would be a makaira rather than hmm. a broadsword. Uh, 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 picturing the scene in the garden. So uh, I think I'm probably correct on that one. I won't say that I'm certain I'm correct, but it sure looks that way to me. 
Uh, and of course, I also have on here, there is no Greek word for syringe. Right. Um, so that moves us on to Revelation uh, 6, uh, verse 5, uh, the third writer. And this is one that I've really focused a lot of time on uh, to try and understand it. It's the black horse. The writer held a yoke or a balance scale. From Strong's, it's uh, uh, number 2218, Zugos, from the root of Zugnumi. Uh, which is to join, especially by yoke. Now, it's a coupling. Uh, for example, figuratively, servitude, a law, or obligation. Also, literally, the beam of the balance as connecting the two scales. Uh, a pair of balances, a yoke. The Greek actually had another name for the device that was used for measuring out uh, uh, a product against a cost. And that, uh, that was actually called a, a Zigarius Isoropius. And uh, you can Google that. And basically that tells you that it's a, a, a scale for measuring weight. Um, so pretty much what it's saying is that uh, uh, the uh, when uh, the black uh, rider of the black horse was saying um, a measure of uh, uh, wheat for a day's wages, uh, it was it was not the rider that was saying it. It was actually a voice that came from the midst of the three beasts, mm -hmm. uh, or excuse me, three living creatures. And who was in the midst of the three living creatures? Uh, they were surrounding the throne. And it was the throne of God. So uh, it, as near as I can understand, it must have been uh, God who spoke that. And he was giving orders to the, uh, uh, to the rider of the uh, black horse. He was telling him, you're allowed to go and you're allowed to have them pay a day's wages just for a living, just for their daily bread. But he also said, the voice came coming from the throne also said, um, do not hurt the oil and the wine. Yeah. Uh, uh, do not, uh, do not harm the oil or the wine. Well, the people way back then that were known as the people of the oil and the wine, those were Christians. They are known to be the people of the oil and the wine. Uh, the oil, uh, that one comes from Zechariah chapter 4, verses 3 and verses 6, and it's the Holy Spirit, the oil. And then from uh, Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29, it talks about the blood or the wine. The wine is the blood, so we're covered by the blood of Christ. We're covered by that wine. And so that was a saying from way back then, uh, the people of the oil and the wine, are the people that are Christians. So if it had come from the rider of the black horse saying it, I could have believed that it was saying uh, that the wine and the oil are too expensive to even touch. So therefore, don't hurt the oil and the wine. But since it was the voice of God, I think it was a promise to all of us that we uh, are going to be protected. He That's a really writer. interesting um, assessment. It's um, man, what how you explain uh, the yoke sounds very similar to what Watchful was saying. You oh, guys good. are like Thank brothers you. from another mother or something. Yeah, have you have you actually seen our playlist video on the on the seals? <laughs> no, unfortunately, no, I have not. I've only been listening recently. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, you're confirming everything that's in there. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, it's it's uh, really fascinating. It, am I doing it scripturally? Am I doing it properly? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, well, it's what, it's interesting. That's what I keep. That's what I keep telling everybody is, um, you know, I'm open for people to refute my arguments, but they're going to mm -hmm. have a hard time because what I presented are facts. Like it's hard to argue against facts. So I based it on the eclipses. Correct. The eclipses happened. You can't argue that they did not happen. 
And then um, I also present that there are events that happened on the same days as those eclipses. And those eclipses happen to yeah. fit a pattern and fit descriptions in the scripture. So it's associating all these things, you know, it's using facts and associating it with scripture. So um, yeah, I definitely great. think I, I definitely think I could have some things wrong, but um, you know, I'm open to somebody refuting those arguments. But it sounds like you're you're just confirming everything I said, and it's interesting. Would you like that you to, yeah, would you, you like haven't to seen run those. into the fourth horse because I think this is where you uh, are hung up a little, and you're not quite sure if we're there yet or not. Yeah, uh, well, because I'm basing it on the on the pattern of the eclipses. Uh huh. Now maybe I can fill you in on a few things on that. Uh, think of the green horse, uh, the green new deal, climate change. Huh. Uh, Kill with a sword, saber, uh, and this one is a, a sword, a saber, or a long broadsword. Uh, it comes from four, uh, 4501 in the Strong's Concordance, which what, is a romphia. Which, a sword are you, deal. which hmm. sword are you referring to now? I'm lost on where you're getting that. So oh, you're, okay. in, you're, in, you're in Revelation 6, right? Yes, the, the Green Horse. Horse. And uh, the Green New Deal has to do with uh, like climate change. There's yeah. That, uh, the uh, Pope uh, and his Laudato Si, it's a seven year agreement. To, yes. Uh, uh, to with King Charles. bring everybody oh, so together about climate. You're referring control. to kill with the sword. So yeah. the writer, mm -hmm. so here, I'll just read this so everybody knows what we're referring to. When he opened the fourth sure. seal, I heard, of, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse and the name of him who sat on on it was death and Hades followed with him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword with hunger with death and by the beasts of the earth so the sword you're referring to there is is that the phrase to kill with sword yeah and that could be war yeah. but it also includes things like climate Green change yeah. Uh, yeah. it includes uh, the creatures of the earth uh, that could be like from bats, or it could be polar ice melting and releasing ancient viruses that we have no protection from. It could come from so many different directions all at once. Right. But I really, I nice really like thing, that that Green Deal. Um, uh, well, you, you know, something I've never said on this channel before, um, but that I've I've been considering it. I just haven't had time to follow it up is I've wondered if um, the climate change isn't the strong delusion that's sent. Because hmm. if you see the damage that it's causing and how delusional people are in regards to climate change, hmm. whether it's the strong delusion that's mentioned, I think, in Thessalonians or not, mm -hmm. it's a delusion. It absolutely <laughs> is. Uh, that's a one really, more, really good point. One more thing I'd like to bring, about, uh, bring out about uh, the green green mm. horse uh you consider the islam their flags all have green in them yeah right and uh that brings in the part about the sword mm -hmm. they yeah. use one of those long curved sabers which is a ramphia or ramphaya uh which is the word that was used uh uh in the greek and came from strong's concordance so that uh, also relates very closely. But I agree. The whole thing is, uh, non-believers, upon death, what happens to them? Where do they go? To the hot place? Hell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, with it being, the writer being death and hell follows closely. Oh. That, uh, described it. But for believers, what happens to us when we die? We go to Christ. We do not right. go to hell. So it's not saying that that's going to happen to us. It's saying right there that that is for the unbelievers. So Man, there's another what a promise. Great, another what promise a great that, perspective. Great it's analysis. Another promise. I, uh, just yeah, after the uh, promise. I got chills of, on uh, that one. Do not harm the uh, the oil or the wine. The people right. of the oil or the wine. That's a promise to us that we're going to be protected. Then, and then the very next one. The black horse, another promise that we're going to be okay because that's not assigned to us. It's not going wow. to happen yeah. to us, so we don't need to worry. There are so many places in the book of Revelation where it talks about protection for us 
for sure. Them. Well, what yeah, about the marketing they? of the 144,000, for instance? Uh, uh, the 144,000 are marked, and that's for protection. They are protected. Uh, the two witnesses, they are protected. Thank you for watching this segment from our live show. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for the Sabbath period. See you soon.